the United States where people will just, once they open up a large vessel, if they have a pistol M2, M3, they'll never, they won't go for it. They'll just feel like, no, that's, that's silly, we're not doing that. And then there are some who will go to Earth's end uh, to open every little branch as possible, follow the TP and so on and so forth. So um, we uh, we were fortunate to look at, uh, we have, uh, Ali Alavi is one of my uh, residents uh, at Emory, and he is actually the pioneer of the STAR registry, which is the Stroke and Stroke Convectomy and Energy Registry. Uh, it's spearheaded by him and uh, uh, Alex Fiona from the University of South Carolina. Um, uh, and has like a, a massive amount of uh, data in there because you know this is this year of, uh, of, of data. So um, we have been crunching a lot of numbers from this data set to answer a lot of these questions that are essentially unanswered. Uh, no disclosures. Um, so as you said, the handout from Bactomy is, is a standard right now for acute human strokes, and there are uh, multiple landmark randomized control trials with uh, uh, that, that essentially prove the benefit of uh, of combining it essentially, but uh, that essentially includes ICA and, uh, and M1 occlusions. Um, so we proceeded to do this uh, study to investigate the clinical and technical outcomes after endovascular combining for isolated um, medium and distal vessel occlusions. So we did essentially two different studies, uh, one for medium vessel, one for distal uh, vessel occlusions. Uh, and compared the clinical and, um, and technical outcomes and, and sort of lumped the data together here in the same presentation for both of them. So talking about medium vessel occlusions, um, uh, for the purpose of this study, uh, the medium vessel thrombectomy, uh, the medium vessel were essentially defined as a mid to distal M2 segments, A1 segment, E1 segments. Um, uh, patients were included from the STAR registry. Uh, essentially, it has a total of almost uh, 8,400 Patients uh, who went and underwent uh, thrombectomy between 2013 and 2021 from 35 sites. Um, so really, like a very massive uh, pool of data. And then medium vessel occlusion uh, was found in uh, approximately 15 young and 20 patients, about 20% of the patients, uh, and they were treated with either adapt or strength lumbar clinical outcomes and their uh, MRI scores at 90 days, uh, and then use various regression models to uh, compare their outcomes. Uh, so here's just a quick comparison between uh, LVO uh, occlusions and a medial vessel occlusion in the data set. As you can see, the, the bulk majority is our MGUs and just a very small number of uh, P1 and, uh, and D1s. Uh, so um, uh, successful recanalization in these cases was achieved in 85% of the cases. Uh, functional independence was about 44%, which is comparable to the L LVO data. Uh, and no significant difference based on location or um, technique of revascularization. So between adapt, slumbra, or strength tree was alone. And overall, the rate of uh, uh, hemorrhage symptomatic or otherwise was 5%, which is again comparable to a, to a LVO data. <laughs> um, and then, um, essentially, like coming back to these uh, regression models, you can see like the, uh, the MRS scores, that there's a rightward shift towards, uh, towards MRS scores um, uh, after the treatment of the middle vessel uh, uh, medium vessel occlusion cases. Um, and then looking at the different uh, techniques and clinical outcomes, uh, no matter what technique you use, uh, it did not really independently predict 90 day functional outcome or uh, 90 day MRI scores. Um, uh, again, depending on what technique you use, uh, but, and the techniques, the variability of technique did not really impact the, the rate of successful recanalization. However, using strength tree was associated with uh, higher adjusted odds of. Symptomatic intracranial hemorrhages, which is sort of kind of makes sense because you have to cross the clot with the wire and, and higher chances of perforation. Um, and because of this data, I mean, I'm I'm a big proponent of just using ADAPT in uh, the distal vessels. Um, and obviously, we can we can talk about this after this talk about why uh, that works slightly better than potentially strain free work. Um, um, and then compared to uh, strength retriever, this is uh, comparing the two uh, techniques, strength retriever versus adapt. Um, adapt resulted in shorter procedure time because you're just aspirating, you're not getting a micro catheter <coughs> the clot and doing micro rounds and, and deploying the strength retriever and then waiting five minutes to integrate the clot. Um, however, there was a slightly higher number of passes, but lower rate of uh, ICH, but uh, compared with clinical outcomes. Um, this is something we were talking about yesterday in one of the sessions about. Uh, uh, how, how many passes are too many. Um, and, and essentially the dictum out there is, uh, we talked about this uh, golden rule, golden hour rule, that you know, if the procedure is taking more than an hour, your, your outcomes start to decline. 
or if you're doing more than three or four passes, you know, the, the futility, the, 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 the the procedure starts to become a little futile. And essentially, in the medium versus the fusion cases, uh, that principle that they come sort of follows. So the, re the recanalization within one hour of growing puncture, uh, uh, if, you, if that's achieved, it predicts higher rates of uh, function dependence and lower odds of ICH. Uh, and again, recanalization within uh, three attempts also predicted improved uh, function dependence. So if you're trying to do four, five, six passes for medium versus fusion, the outcomes are, are not as great as you can see here. Um, as you can see here, the, the graph kind of starts to plateau here after about three attempts. And then here, after 60 minutes of procedure time, the graph will start to, uh, to plateau out. Um, so you have to like sort of um, decide between the risk of going on with the procedure versus the function benefit that you will achieve with that. So our conclusion was uh, for, for medium muscle is, is there's comparable efficacy and safety outcomes of patients undergoing thrombectomy for medium muscle occlusion. Um, regardless, and regardless of, the, of the thrombectomy technique that's employed, the golden hour rule of the three class approval does apply to the uh, uh, middle of uh, the medium vessels. There's no really, there's no difference in clinical outcomes, uh, no matter what kind of thrombectomy technique is used, and there's high rate of ICH uh, with stent fever, uh, understandably slow as compared to that. Uh, so this was sort of a, a, a big breakthrough, at least for our institutional practice, uh, to really uh, go for um, medium vessel occlusions. Now moving on to the distal vessel real quick. Uh, same thing, uh, distal vessels were uh, recognized as M3, M4 segments, A2, A3, B2, B3. Um, other uh, concomitant uh, or concurrent uh, occlusions were excluded from the study. Once again, star data uh, in 400 patients, about 3% uh, were treated with adapt stent fever or combined approach for distal vessel occlusions. So obviously, small, a really small uh, subset of, of patients. Uh, here again, the bulk majority is M3s, a little bit of A2s and P2s. Um, and successful recanalization was achieved in 75% of the patients versus 85% in LVO or medium vessel occlusion cases. Uh, rate of functional dependence in 90 days was uh, was 44%, uh, which kind of makes sense, versus 37% in LVO because it's you know they're more much more distal vessels, the morbidity is uh, probably less uh, unless it's in a, in a really elegant territory. Uh, however. Um, uh, when we compare stent fever to ADAPT, it was worse 90 day MRS scores in stent fever versus uh, ADAPT, and that has uh, really have to do with uh, with uh, hemorrhage rates. Um, so, uh, in, the, in the distal uh, vessel occlusion the data set, uh, critical functional dependence was uh, absence of diabetes, lower NIS stroke scale, IV TPA use, and successful recanalization. Obviously, IV TPA use is because TPA works really well for these distal occlusions. Uh, uh, however, uh, frontline technique did not influence clinical outcomes when confounders were adjusted for. So it really depends on how you look at the data. Um, stent fever versus just adapt is, uh, is more or less equivocal. Um, in terms of recanalization, there's no difference in techniques in rate of successful recanalization. And if you do multivariate an an analysis, there's no difference in uh, ICH by, by technique. But if you just look at isolated uh, data set, then stent fever is slightly higher than, than adapt. Um, like once again, compared to SRT, as we saw for medium vessel, for, for ADAPT, you just need a slightly higher number of passes, and it's not a, a huge number, um, and there is no difference in remaining clinical or technical outcomes. So essentially, um, um, oh yeah, and one last thing, the, the golden hour rule, again, if, if you can recanalize within one hour, it does predict higher odds of function dependence, and then if you can recanalize within two attempts, uh, uh, it predicts uh, improved uh, chances of uh, functional uh, recovery or functional dependence by 90 days. Uh, and this graph basically predicts the same thing. So uh, in conclusion, uh, again, uh, comparable efficacy and safety uh, for patients doing for this uh, for distal vessels. Uh, the distal vessel occlusion still follows the golden hour and, and a two-pass rule. No, no difference in clinical outcomes across uh, what, um, uh, what technique is used. Um, and the uh, stent fever thrombectomy was more influenced by attempts, whereas aspiration outcomes were more dependent on the procedure time. Um, this is our team from Emory and uh, from University of South Carolina. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll end with that and take any questions. <coughs> uh, Dr. Pavani, I have uh, a question to ask. It's like uh, whenever you are going for more distal occlusions, I mean, there is a problem with the support, support as well. So usually the stent retrieval technique gets better, but your data <coughs> suggests that uh, the results were either equivocal or the ADAPT technique results were more preferred over better outcomes as compared to the stent retrieval. That is one question. 
And the second question is that in your study, you have also mentioned that there were greater number of passes associated with the DAP technique as well. So if that was the case, that if there are more passes with the DAP, then why DAP had a better outcome, even with more passes? Thank so you. the outcomes are actually same for stent treatment and DAP. It's only the ICH rate, which is higher with stent treatment, um, uh, rather than ADAPT. Um, with ADAPT, I think, obviously, we are taking a catheter to distal. Uh, we're fortunate in the US that we have um, several lines of these aspiration catheters that go from 035 all the way up to 088. Uh, so you can really push your push your envelope and, and take those catheters really distally. Um, I think uh, as far as outcomes are concerned, I'd suggest that outcomes are essentially the same. Uh, as far as the function depends the same between strength treatment and the adapt group. Uh, in terms of passes, obviously, it, it all really depends on if you are able to do contact aspiration um, uh, with your distal catheters, right? So you, for, for strength treatment, um, if your strength treatment is, is distal to the clot, that's all you need sometimes. If, even if you don't get your aspiration catheter up close, you can probably drag your clot up to, this, up to your um, suction catheter. But for just for that, you really need to be engaged and to be able to, to do that. Uh, my feeling, and, and I let the, uh, the, uh, the more experts here uh, correct me, but my experience with distal um, vessel occlusion is ADAPT works most of the time really well if you're able to get the catheter. And I think the reason for that is there's a higher suction force per surface area when you're applying suction through these smaller catheters. And then also those smaller catheters are actually occlusive in those distal vessels, so you really shut down the, any integrate flow. It, it, it enhances your clot engagement with uh, into the suction catheter. You know, the uh, problem that we are facing uh, mm -hmm. at our center is that Precious. whenever we are trying to, you know, push the system more distally, what is happening that is leading to vessel dissection, and in fact, the system get pulled out as well. Right. Many a times, especially once you go to the cavernous part and all that. Right. So that's why, you know, for more distal lesions, we are more, uh, we are preferring the stent retrieval technique sure. over the adapt. Right. But you are telling uh, a different story. So yes, you really tell us what would be the method, because we would also like to go by DAP technique, going for more distal occlusions. Right. But how can we do that? Yes, yeah, so uh, one of the things that I've learned is obviously you yeah, have yeah, this, yeah. Like, the, the tower of power, right? So you Smart need a very good proximal support. Obviously, if the arch is bad, and you have a type 3 arch, and you have, you have struggled Absolutely. in the first place to get yeah. up you know, in the first place, you, uh, what I generally do in those cases is I'll, I'll rely on my balloon guide catheter. And the reason is that I can take my balloon guide as high as up to Petrus, and when I'm trying to push my catheters very, very distal, I'll inflate the balloon and the balloon guide catheter, so that sort of anchors my whole system, uh, and then I'm able to um, then I'm able to push that. And then obviously there's an intermediate, so within the balloon guide, there's usually an intermediate catheter, which will be like a 71 or a 55, uh, and then within that, that will be the, the, a 35 catheter that will go very distally. And then, uh, you know, uh, we talked about these wires that can, uh, they're softer now, like, uh, and then I, I, I uh, Dr. Umar Tanvi was talking about these um, 035 Colossus wires, which are like thicker wire, which essentially is safer in distal vessels because of its surface area. It, it's, it doesn't act like a spear, so the chance that you poke something is, is actually uh, is actually less. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, as I said, we're, we're blessed to have those uh, tools in our uh, yes, box that we can use. Uh, but yeah, if, if, you are, if you're short on supplies, then yes, it can be really challenging to, to get your catheters just Thank you so much. Excellent talk. Uh, appreciate you guys. Next, I think uh, he's doing.